Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Hope you're all in good form. Today I'm going to be going through some CD purchases from charity shops or thrift stores as you call them in America. Uh, all of these were at one pound or less with the exception of uh, one which was one pound fifty. And starting off then, it's uh, Mavis Staples and You Are Not Alone. And uh, this came out on the Anti label. Uh, this was the one pound fifty purchase by the way. Uh, this was the Gospel and Soul Legends uh, 2010 album produced by Jeff Tweedy from Wilco and it won the Grammy for Best Americana Album. Uh, thankfully, Tweedy plays to her strengths and even writes uh, a couple of songs, gospel tinged songs for her, including the title track and arranges a couple of traditional songs. Her voice remains powerful. She'll have been about 70 or 71 at the time of recording and... Um, her voice is deep toned and a moving instrument whether she's just phrasing the words or blasting uh, the song out as she does on her version of the Reverend uh, Gary Davis's uh, I Belong to the Band. Next up it's the Steve Gibbons Band and uh, Any Road Up and Rolling On on uh, the Road Goes On Forever label and uh, this was a 50 pence purchase uh, double CD uh, these are the first two albums by the Steve Gibbons Band, uh, which were recorded in 1976 and 1977. And um, they were reissued on a label which was run by uh, a hero of mine, the music journalist John Tobler. The uh, debut album from 1976 is more blues rock. Um, I think um, if you look at the track uh, or listen to the track Speed Kills, for example, and there's also a lot of American influenced um, melodic rock, similar to say uh, Little Feet and especially Bob Dylan on the track Little Susie. On the second album, Rolling On, he's starting to perfect his more commercial uh, rock and roll revival sound, which brought him some success in the late 70s here in the UK. Next up, we've got Bodast and Towards Utopia. And uh, this was put out on the Esoteric label and it was a 50 pence purchase. Uh, this was a short-lived band from the late 60s and they included a uh, pre-Yes uh, Steve Howe on uh, lead guitar. They recorded an album in 1969 uh, which unfortunately didn't see the light of day until 1981 and uh, this is the reissue from 2017. And it was produced by Steve Howe's uh, old bandmate from Tomorrow, Keith West. Uh, the quality of the guitar playing, as you'd expect, is, is pretty impressive. And you can tell uh, straight away that uh, this is Steve Howe uh, as, he, as he sounded in Yes. In fact, the opening track, um, Never Street, includes a guitar riff, which he later utilised on uh, the track Starship Trooper. The next album is Los Lobos and How Will the Wolf Survive? which was put out on the London label. Uh, this is an 80s album which hasn't dated at all. Um, and even at this early stage in their career, when they were being billed as a rock band, uh, they certainly still managed to uh, mix up the uh, Petty-esque uh, guitar rock with some more traditional Mexican music, uh, such as on uh, the track Serenata Nortena, and also quite a few originals which sound like they are uh, uh, old classics from uh, Mexico. The spot-on production by T-Bone Burnett and Steve Berlin uh, avoids uh, the, the clinical sound which uh, dogged a lot of uh, albums from the 1980s. Uh, next we have uh, Luis Calaf and Mi Pelito de Oro on the Sico Tropical label. And this was a name that was uh, totally new to me, uh, but the CD looked interesting and it was only uh, 50 pence, so it was worth a punt. He was a composer, guitarist and uh, singer, came from the Dominican Republic and uh, Mi Polito de Oro came out back in 1960. As a songwriter, his songs uh, were covered by various artists, including uh, Celia Cruz, uh, who I really rate. Uh, the merengue beat on this album is pretty infectious at times. If you like artists like the uh, Joe Cuba Sextet, uh, Celia Cruz, uh, Celio Gonzalez, Tito Puente, uh, Lola Flores, 
all of which have uh, released CDs on the Seco Tropical label. I think uh, you'd like this as well. Next up, it's uh, Ozzy Osbourne and Diary of a Madman on the Epic label, another 50 pence purchase. And um, to show you the details on the back. If you can get past all of the stupidity that surrounded his lifestyle at the time, uh, there's a lot to enjoy on uh, Osborne's second solo album. Uh, his love for the Beatles and that wonderful tone that he has to his voice uh, mean that uh, you do, do get uh, quite a few quality, memorable songs. And um, this is, uh, I think, one of his better albums. Uh, unfortunately, this is the 2002 reissue. And very controversially, uh, he re-recorded um, Bob Daisley's bass and uh, Lee Kerslake's uh, drums. And um, it leaves a bit of a nasty taste in the mouth, to be honest. So I'd, I'd like to actually hear uh, the versions with uh, them playing the drums and bass. Next up, a band that needs no introduction, uh, Steely Dan. And this is Showbiz Kids. The Steely Dan story 1972-1980 and uh, it was put out by MCA Double CD. It's an impressive overview uh, spread across the two CDs of their career from the first album Can't Buy a Thrill through to 1980's uh, Gaucho. Uh, the arrangements incorporating some jazz elements never uh, teeter over into bland jazz fusion. Although I still can't really get used to their lyrics, which I find uh, very irritating. And next up, it's David Johansson and the Harry Smiths self-titled album. And this was put out on the Chesky label. Uh, the album came out in 2000. Uh, David Johansson, of course, was the vocalist in the New York Dolls. And these are interpretations of country and folk songs from the 1920s and 1930s. Uh, his vocals uh, have an authentic gruffness to them and the backing band utilises guitar, mandolin and banjo uh, to re in a very respectful manner to re create um, quite an interesting sound. Uh, next, another classic and it's uh, Rod Stewart and Gasoline Alley. And this is at, or put out on the Mercury label and it was his second solo album and it came out in 1970. Uh, by this stage, he's already sticking to the formula that was set on his uh, debut album, An Old Raincoat uh, Won't Ever Let You Down. Uh, so it's a mixture of uh, choice covers. Uh, the two best for me are My Way of Giving, uh, written by Ronnie Lane and Steve Marriott, and uh, Dylan's uh, Only a Hobo. And you also get a smattering of Rod Stewart originals, uh, the title track Gasoline Alley, which is fantastic, and also Lady Day and uh, Joe's Lament. The tasteful, mostly acoustic backing with mandolin to the fore uh, has aged really well. And uh, Rod Stewart's vocals at the time are, are, are at their absolute peak. And moving on, we come to a uh, jazz album, uh, Night Train by the Oscar Peterson Trio. And on this was on the uh, Verve label. Uh, I can remember seeing Oscar Peterson on TV when I was a child and just being mesmerised by uh, how fast his fingers moved across the piano. Um, this was recorded in late 1962 and it's a jazz album for people that uh, don't really like jazz. The tracks don't outstay their welcome and uh, most of them are standards and the playing is of such a high quality that you never sit back and think, oh, there's only uh, piano, bass and drums on this recording. And the next album is Clifford T. Ward and Home Thoughts. And uh, this is on the Virgin label. It was his second album and got released in 1973. Although he'd been around as, as a struggling musician and a songwriter from the mid 60s. Um, I've talked before about my love for Fay English middle-class singer-songwriters and uh, Clifford T. Ward is one of the best. And uh, this album marked his creative peak with uh, the hit single Gay. In fact, his, his only proper uh, hit single here in the UK. Uh, Richard Hewson's sympathetic uh, orchestral arrangements are definitely worthy of mention on this album. Uh, Wherewithal, the follow-up single to Gay should have been a hit 
and uh, the track that I always uh, turn back to and, and have loved uh, right from hearing it many years ago is uh, Home Thoughts from Abroad, which is a sentimental but affecting uh, song about homesickness for Worcestershire and the girl he left behind. And it can bring a tear to your eye if, uh, if you're in the right mood for it. Uh, next up, it's Mr. David Viner and This Boy Don't Care. And this was put out on the Loop label. Uh, it's another name that was new to me, uh, but I bought it uh, having noticed that uh, it was produced by uh, Liam Watson at Torag Studios, uh, which is famed for its analogue equipment, and also that the drummer on this is uh, Bruce Brand of the Milkshakes, although when I actually played the album, uh, there's hardly any drumming on, on it at all. Um, the title track is a catchy, uh, sprightly acoustic number, uh, with added flute, which I find quite appealing. Um, other tracks include I'm Sick and Tired of Being on My Own and Goblin in My Bread, which are blues pastiches. And uh, also there's a, a country pastiche called um, Don't Take It to Heart. It's uh, pleasant enough, but um, not uh, particularly a memorable album. And next, uh, this is something that really blew me away. Uh, just 50 pence purchase. It's American Epic, the soundtrack. And um, American Epic came out in 19, uh, 2017. Uh, it was a three-part documentary, uh, co-production between um, the BBC in the UK and uh, PBS in America. And it uh, tells the story of the birth of modern popular music in America in the 1920s. Um, it is actually available on YouTube if you search it out and I've been watching the episodes and really enjoying them. Uh, this one disc uh, summation of the series contains uh, some of the most important songs of the early 20th century. Uh, just to name three, there's the Carter Family and uh, Bury Me Under the Weeping Willow, uh, Memphis uh, Jug Band and On the Road Again and uh, Waiting for a Train, Jimmy Rogers. Uh, the recordings have been beautifully restored as well, so there's very little uh, crackle and um, surface noise. Um, checking out further, I found out that there is actually a 5-CD deluxe box set with a beautiful um, photographic book that came with it, and uh, that's still available, and I'm thinking about getting it, but I'm quite decided yet. And uh, next up, it's uh, Ziggy Stardust, uh, David Bowie. An album that I'm sure most of you know. Um, I'm reading a biography of Mick Ronson at the moment, so that uh, certainly added to my enjoyment of, of listening to this CD. Uh, as personalities, Ronson and uh, Bowie were like chalk and cheese, uh, but they certainly gelled as musicians. Uh, um, Bronson was a naturally a gifted guitarist and, and piano player. He had um, classical music lessons as a child and he was brilliant at, at coming up with string arrangements as well and that certainly helped some of the songs on this album, uh, especially uh, Five Years, which um, the string arrangement is just fantastic and uh, as some classical elements have crept into that. And uh, also Bowie's vocals, I think, were never better than they were on Five Years. It's just a stunning performance. Uh, this is the digital remaster from 2002, and it's uh, absolutely breathtaking. Uh, having played it against my uh, old uh, vinyl copy, it uh, just reveals uh, so many nuances. I always thought um, the production was a, was a bit rushed uh, when you hear it on vinyl, but uh, yeah, it just sounds fantastic. Uh, this CD uh, also included uh, a 5.1 surround mix, uh, but uh, unfortunately I don't have the equipment to play that, so I can only go on the remaster, but um, I uh, really rate that remaster. And uh, next up, it's Elvis Costello, uh, Extreme Honey, the very best of the Warner Brothers years. Let's go a bit closer. Um, this is a compilation covering tracks he recorded for Warner Brothers between 1988 and 1996. Uh, I always class these as like the musical magpie years because he was working with various musicians and producers. So people like uh, the Brodsky Quartet, uh, T-Bone Burnett, uh, Mitchell Frew. 
He managed to get a hit both in the UK and America with uh, Veronica, which he co-wrote with Paul McCartney. And um, he spent most of these years studiously avoiding the attractions. Uh, my favourite track on here by far is uh, All This Useless Beauty, uh, which saw him back with the attractions in um, 1996. And uh, that's it for today. And I'm actually, having said in the previous video, I'm struggling to find uh, uh, CDs in charity shops. I've, I've picked up quite a few in the last uh, two or three weeks. So uh, I'll have enough for another video uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks or so. Okay, and uh, I'll see you again soon, so take care.